Welcome back inside Studio B. We are live with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play, alongside the great Kristen Kozlowski. My name is Jason Shepard, and we are happy to have the head coach of the BYU women's basketball program joining us, Amber Whiting. Coach, always good to see you. How are Thank you? you? Good, good. Thank you. So winning's, uh, winning's pretty fun, isn't it? Takes care of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, th this team's having a lot of fun, and, and they're having fun because they're playing really good basketball right now. Yeah, no, they, I mean, they love each other. They're out there and they play for each other. And so when, the, you know, it's fun to see them get hyped on certain plays and whatnot. So yeah, I like, it's fun to coach them too. You've had a couple big wins. Baylor, UCF, Cincinnati on the road. What's been the biggest key to your success for that stretch? Um, I think just them believing in themselves. Cause we as coaches believed in them. Um, and it was just like how to get over that last hump. And I just kept thinking to myself, you know, you're in all these games. What is going to put them over the hump? And I just, you know, dove into, like, believing in each other, believing in themselves. And so I think they, that's what turned the corner. I don't know. It was crazy. You know, when you think about how long the season is, it can obviously be a grind. And then when you take into account all of the <clears throat> off-season training and getting ready, you know, you, you get to this point of the year and you've been playing and coaching and doing all these things for a really, really long time. And there's always going to be peaks and valleys. Where have you seen the biggest growth from your team from the start of the year to now, you know, getting towards the end of the regular season? Um, I think chemistry and just being able to know what each other's doing all the time. Um, we didn't have a couple girls in the summer because of injuries or coming back from them. And then, you know, our rosters changed a lot in the meantime. And so they've stuck together through all those ups and downs. And I think just the chemistry and um, knowing where each other's at on the court and knowing what each other does well and playing to those strengths and those weaknesses. To piggyback off that, I, I on what Jason said, your backcourt, your true freshmen that are leading you right now, I've been so incredibly impressed with their composure, their calmness out there on the court. Where have you seen the biggest growth with those two players? Um, I think their decision making. I know that uh, there was a couple early games on where I wanted one shot and I yelled at Amari like one, and it just didn't happen that way. She, you know what I mean? So now it's to the point where they both understand time and score. The clock's our friend at certain points in the game. You know, we get a still. We don't need to force it down their throats. We can back it out, get a better shot. Um, just those types of decision makings down the stretch, I think, have been a huge growth in their both their games. I think it's been it's been fun to to go on the road and with this team, and it's been interesting that. When we go on the road, when whether it's the opposing play-by-play -play or anybody asking uh, about the team, they, they all want to ask about Lauren. They're like, T tell me a little bit more about Lauren. Like, they're all enamored with the numbers mm -hmm. that she's putting up. And we certainly know how great she is, and she's 80 career double-doubles. What makes her so productive and so, um, you know, so skilled at what she does? I think her desire, like, she just has that motor, and it's nothing that I do. It is all her, and she just wants it, you know, and so, and she holds herself to a very high standard, and she's always accountable for that. Um, last time we played Kansas, we walked out, and first thing she says, I'm sorry, coach, like, she didn't play her best game, you know, and so when I think, granted, she had a double-double that game, right, so, but to, but to put her in that limelight and just know that she's going to go get it every night, every night, and then everybody else can just kind of follow suit. Well, you've got your big three that we've talked a little bit about already and the two freshmen and then Guestin, but has there been anybody else on this roster that surprised you at this point in the season? Um, I think everybody has been playing their role really, really well. Um, I think Smiler, she's a knockdown shooter, but she also defends like crazy. Um, and you go down the you go down the line, like Emma, she had that crazy stretch against Baylor. Like, I mean, that was insane for her to come in. I think she scored 14 points in 13 minutes, something like that. Um, Davenport, Rose has stepped into starting lineup like and done really well for us. And so I think every single person on our roster plays their role. And that's what I love about this group is they know what they're good at and they try to play to that strength and do what's best for us. Yeah, and I think that you, you've got to have buy-in from the players to do that mm -hmm. because, like you said, you've had, you've had players that will go a, a 10-game stretch as a starter, and then you're going to need them to play in, in, a, in a backup role coming off the bench. But if you don't have that buy-in, it doesn't work. But you've had that, and I, I, think that's, I think that's really helped this team be able to get to the point that they are this season. I just talk to them. I'm just open and honest, and we have communication where I can sit them down and say, okay, this is what I need from you. This is where we're at, and explain the whys of it. And I feel like they just buy into it. It's really nice. I mean, credit to them, yeah. all of them. 
Okay, as you turn the page now to look at Kansas coming in here, they've won four straight, kind of a little bit on a roll. Jackson was a handful last game. As a coach, strategically, what's the difference that going into this game, game plan, and where the team's at? Um, well, we watched the, our game film, we watched their last couple games, and just to see like where some of their weaknesses are too, right? Um, and to change things up on our end defensively because she just had her way with us, and we can't do that again. Um, I think Emma got in foul trouble real quick, and so it changed what we were gonna do. And so I think hopefully going into this and playing at home, that could help us too. Is, as Kristen mentioned, you know, Tiana Jackson, she had the 25 points, 22 rebounds, five blocks. And, and, a lot, and so much of what she was doing and why she was successful was getting second chance opportunities. She was getting offensive rebounds. How much of a focus is that specifically limiting the second chance point, specifically with her, but just in general? I mean, it's huge. We played um, a stretch of zone and we got stops, but we didn't rebound out yeah. of it. And so we got to rebound out of it if we can play a zone, right? Um, but she just, she was a monster that game. She had a, um, I don't know, she had just a motor that didn't yeah. quit that game. And so we have to take care of her first and foremost, but then they have some other really good players that we have to lock down too. And so it's not just one player. That's why they're so effective and playing so well right now is they're just very balanced. So we have to make sure we're staying true to the defensive strategy that we line out. Do you anticipate the return <clears throat> of the bat? Yes. <laughs> out, out in Lawrence, Kansas, oh. you had this bat that appeared in the gym, in the arena, that for about crazy. a five-minute stretch, right, in that second quarter. So tell us how that played out and what that was like as a coach. Um, well, honestly, I feel like it kind of loosened our girls up. Like, they were laughing a little bit at it, you know, and they just kind of, and then when, you know, it went away, well, I, didn't, I don't know if it ever went away, they didn't catch it, but we just... Uh, watching, watching everybody that, try and catch like, it was crazy. great. No, it was funny. Um, but then they kind of loosened up a little bit, and then we went on a run, and it kind of helped us. I mean, so, yeah, the bat, that was insane. I've never seen that in my life. Maybe some good luck. A little bit of good <laughs> the luck, good luck right? bat? Well, so, <laughs> yeah. now, at the time, so I'm on the air, and I, you, as you mentioned, they never caught it. And ultimately, play resumes. But I saw that the referees were talking with, with you two head coaches, and I was wondering, like, is this game going to have to stop? Is this, is this like a, a hazard, having this thing even around? And so they told me after the game that you, it was really up to you two coaches if the game was going to be halted for a while, if you were going to play. What, is that basically how that went down? Yeah, they just asked us what we wanted to do, and we said, like, as long as it's away from the players, like, let's play. You know, like, we don't want to stop the game. And so they said if it ever flew down close again, then they would stop it, chase it out again, because they never caught it. For what we heard, it did hit the freshman for yeah. Kansas, right? It hit in Miami Nichols. Nichols. Yes. 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 <laughs> but no yeah, BYU player was out. affected. No. And Nat said it had landed like on the benches, a couple benches up from us, behind us. <laughs> I didn't even wild. know what was going on. I know. It was, I was wild. Just, it was crazy. Yeah. What's been your... Um, we, we spent so much time leading into this season talking about the, the new journey into the Big 12. What, what, has, what has this journey been like so far for, for you and the team? Um, it's everything that I expected as far as, like, um, the teams are hard. They're tough. They are very different. They play very hard. They, I don't know, just, like, the coaches you go up against, their strategies, you know, like, everything's, everything's what I thought it would be. But night in, night out, like, the grind on the players' bodies is what I was you know, like a little bit, like wasn't prepared for. And so we've tried to manage their bodies along the way during practice, you know. Um, and I thought I'd be a lot deeper too than what I am. Um, but it's, it's fun. I'm not going to lie. It is so fun to go out there every night and just be able to fight the best. And so to be able to play, I mean, I don't know how many teams we have ranked now this week. What is that, four or five something? But you get that every night out, a chance to knock off the ranked teams. And so that's what's fun about it. I love it. Well, Coach, thank you for being with us. Best yep. of luck tomorrow as you, you look for your fourth win tomorrow against Kansas. And you can catch that game tomorrow live on BYU TV at 6 Eastern. It'll be on the Big 12 now, ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. Yeah, we uh, obviously want to make sure we give the, uh, the BYU Sports Nation karma to Coach Whiting and the team as they get ready to take on the Jayhawks.